Zhangbo and welcome to the Wikudin. My guest tonight is um, Lili Wangchu, the president of Truk Chirong Chokpa. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, the reason why I invited you is simply because it's imperative for people like us working in media to offer you this platform once in a while so that you share your concerns, your opinions, your comments because you represent a certain group or certain section of the society. You also have your own group of supporters and their voices may not have reached the intended target and you represent them and through you those voices can be heard. So thank you once again for your being here tonight. First thing, what have you been doing so far? Uh, people don't hear much about uh, the activities that uh, you as president of Chirong Chokpa and also your party initiated. Right. Uh First of all, the, the, I would like to thank BBS for giving Dukchi Rotsakwa this platform. And uh, uh, I think uh, such platform is really important for us to stay connected with the people on our own role as political party in between elections. Um, as far as our activities are concerned, uh, since the elections, uh, we have been, uh, you know, engaged amongst our political, uh, you know, party uh, sub members and supporters. Uh, we have uh, reconstituted our executive committee member. We have also bought and bought uh, a lot of new uh, potential candidates for 2018 elections. Uh, we have also been, uh, um, you know, revisiting uh, some of our own priority areas for the future, uh, especially in our manifesto. We have also been in touch with our own Zonkok uh, party officers and Zonkok coordinators and uh, we are hopeful that uh, by the end of the year um, that me and some of my colleagues uh, from the party secretariat will also uh, travel throughout the country and uh, reconnect with some of our own supporters at the grassroots. Yes. yes. All the parties outside the parliament especially the three new political parties, the role, the kind of role that uh, these three political parties have played wasn't really uh, as expected by the people because you have largely been remaining silent on many issues and because of that people tend to believe and people get a feeling that uh, as a party staying outside the parliament, if you endorse the views of the government, you'll be seen as colluding with the government and uh, hitting the opposition and if you support the opposition on certain issues and appraise the government on your reservations, you will also be then seen as colluding with the opposition. Is that the fear that uh, you go through and that you choose to remain silent on yes. some issues? Um, our intention, our intention and objective uh, why our party was formed in the first place was not only to contest in the election, but we genuinely wanted to make uh, a positive contribution in yes. the democratic process and be able to make meaningful contributions in the country. So we have no fears of uh, being seen aligned with any of the political parties. I think we as a political party, we have our own stand and position on a number of issue, issues yes. uh, that concerns our country. The only challenge we face is uh, there is an absence of a formal platform where we can actively engage with parties in the parliament on issues of importance or issues of national concern. Yes. And uh, so basically because of that, uh, we have found ourselves helpless in being able to take the voices of sections of the society that we represent or the society at large. Uh, which we believe could have repercussions, uh, you know, on our country and society in the future. We ourselves have had challenge in yes. taking those issues uh, up with the parties uh, in the parliament. Yes. Now, if institutions like political parties feel helpless, you could imagine the situation of general public. They must be feeling more helpless than you to raise their voice because they expect uh, uh, political parties to raise their voice on their behalf, that's why they supported you. True. La. True. Uh, the, it's, uh, I think because of the fact that we have a two-party system, I think uh, there seems to be um, limited understanding on 
role of political parties in between elections. And I think it's because of that, that, uh, you know, unlike other advanced democracies, we don't have the culture of dialogue, cooperation and partnership between yes. political parties in between elections. Mm. And uh, our voices and concerns that we share are often taken as position taken by yes. few individuals and uh, there is not much seriousness taken on part of the, uh, the parties in power on the stand that we take as political parties. And I think this is a huge uh, challenge for our democracy. And yes. uh, it does not, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think it's not good for a vibrant democracy in future. La. Yes. Maybe because of this situation, you have just recently launched this Bhutan Media Dialogue. La. Tell us a little more about this dialogue. Less. Um, this Bhutan Democracy Dialogue, the idea uh, of uh, this joint multi-party association was formed after five political parties uh, made a trip to Denmark in yes. June uh, 2014. Uh, while we were in Denmark, uh, we realized that all of us had similar aspirations for our country, except that our approaches were different. Yes. We also agreed that uh, because of, uh, you know, different uh, political parties with different ideologies, the, a lot, certain elements of disharmony in society has also been created. And we agreed that it was important that uh, as uh, parties together, it was important that we contribute towards a more harmonious political environment and vibrant democracy. Yes. So those of us who are outside the parliament, we're hoping that Bhutan Democracy Dialogue could be a common platform where we can share issues of common interests and, yes. and of national importance. And we can also get an opportunity to engage in dialogue with the yes. government. Yes. Now, how far are you going to take this dialogue forward? Because for now you launched it, continuity and uh, uh, sustainability has to be there, which unfortunately in some cases we lack. So, if you could talk about, tell us about that continuity, the fear is that this could just be a one-time affair and then finish it. Yes. Uh, Bhutan Democracy Dialogue will be governed by a charter which has been jointly signed by five political parties mm. in the presence of Election Commission of Bhutan. Uh, we have also, um, you know, we also have a steering committee uh, a committee where, where we have representatives from all political parties and we have clear work plan up till uh, 2018. Yes. So, so we are hoping that uh, some of us uh, who started this as founding members, we would be able to uh, create a clear, a strong foundation so that Bhutan democracy will, uh, will survive and uh, will be able to uh, work towards its intended objectives in, in the future. But uh, um, you think this will happen at all simply because of the fact that uh, forget political parties, like, even within different departments, in s small agencies, we are so territorial in our nature like, and we just want to protect our own territories. Yes. And because of that, uh, you think this will help? Like? I think uh, because of the problem that you just pointed out, I think that's one of our biggest uh, reason why, um, you know, we have not seen a lot of success yes. um, in, in most of our projects. La. And I think uh, a beginning has to be made. Uh, whether it will work or not, I think, will largely depend on, uh, uh, you know, the political will and commitment of all the political parties who are signatory to this uh, dialogue. La. Do you but see I that think, for now? But uh, I think a beginning has to be made. And I think there is general acceptance amongst the political parties that uh, Parties during elections have contributed to this division uh, in the society along the party lines. And uh, the close-knit society, which was earlier there under the monarchist system of governance, has now been affected with the introduction of uh, democracy. So I think uh, the a beginning has to be made in not only encouraging multi-party uh, democracy, but also an effort to overcome our own differences, build trust and friendship amongst political parties, create a more harmonious uh, political environment, and uh, be able to regain uh, the confidence of people in our country's democratic system. Yes. 
the way parties have campaigned, the way parties have conducted themselves during the elections, actually, as I'm pointed out, uh, left a serious uh, dent on our society, especially with uh, the divisions that you have just mentioned. People are getting divided, families are getting divided, and there are so many others, uh, other factors that have led to so much uh, disharmony within the society. And this is one area that parties need to work. Any solutions that you have thought about how right. to go about right. solving this problem? Um, I think uh, when we went to the elections, uh, the two elections we've uh, gone through so far, unfortunately, uh, I think our political leaders have looked at uh, bad examples from the region. And uh, we have, uh, for the sake of winning elections, I think people have engaged in a lot of negative campaigning. We've said things uh, that were undesirable. We've said things that affects the very unity and solidarity of our country yes. as a nation. And I think uh, given the fact that we are a small nation with a small population, I think uh, we cannot encourage this diversity, diversity in terms of uh, differences uh, along the party lines. La. And I think it is so important that uh, we, uh, we work towards creating a more harmonious political environment, especially given the fact that unlike uh, the experience of democracies in other countries where democracy had been introduced through a lot of violence and bloodshed uh, and revolution, given the fact that democracy in Bhutan has been gifted, gifted, you know, from the throne and introduced in a very peaceful manner, I think we have the opportunity to introduce uh, and promote a very unique democracy. You know, we don't necessarily have to go the way, uh, you know, democracies, I mean, the elections are conducted, campaigns are conducted in the region. I think we have the opportunity to promote a more peaceful, uh, you know, and harmonious political environment. And I think the fact that uh, the five parties have already come together, I think uh, already, uh, I think, spells really well for yes. our democracy. Easier said than done. Um, you think this will happen simply because during the time of election, people get carried away, people become so passionate. Winning the election is their primary motive and thereby initially people would say that we're just there to contest. Winning is not so important. But the way things are done and the way people campaign and conduct themselves doesn't really seem to tell people that we are there just to contest. The aim is to win. And to win, you can go to any extent. True. And this can be repeated. True, true. Um, while we have uh, a lot of uh, provisions in our you know, rules and regulation on um, discouraging political corruption and negative campaigning, I think at the ground, uh, I've seen for myself that uh, you know, people do engage in uh, you know, the, these sort of undesirable activities. And I think... Uh, yeah, it would be very important for a political uh, leaders to realize that, you know, uh, in the interest of our own, uh, you know, nation's uh, sovereignty and solidarity, that uh, I think it's so important for a political leaders to exercise some restraint on these sort of undesirable activities in the future. La. Yes. For now, the concern is the division. Uh, through this media, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, through this democracy dialogue, have you had any discussions on having an immediate plan where this is one forum where I offer to you and you're uh, making your opinion clear to the people, but any formal forums uh, with all parties coming together and letting people know that we cannot afford any divisions of any sort? Right. Uh, in our work plan for 2015 and 16, uh, we do have plans to travel throughout the 20 Zonkakla yes, yes. as a common platform where the, you know we go and share this message that uh, in between elections we are united, and uh, and it was important that uh, people should also uh, you know uh, people should also be looking at. Uh, that we should also promote a lot of solidarity and unity amongst uh, amongst the society. So th this is the message that we want to go around promoting. We also want to engage in a lot of uh, you know, seminar and dialogue and uh, conferences where we not only uh, enhance uh, better understanding about the essence of democracy, 
uh, but also encourage a lot of partnership and cooperation amongst political parties. Yes. Um, you already pointed out that uh, you do not have much formal platform platforms where you could apprise certain issues to the government or maybe to the opposition for that matter. Keeping this in mind, through this dialogue, well, all the parties come together. Do you see that things would really change and that there will be some positive uh, things happening in the society, especially to amend the dis divisions that we are seeing for now? I'm saying this because ruling and the opposition parties might feel that uh, we have the upper hand. We are in the parliament. So why should we listen to those parties who are not even in the parliament, who have not been so active? So we will take their views and comments with a pinch of salt. True. It, it's not going to be an easy journey. And uh, the, I, I think it's, I agree with you that it's going to be uh, a, a challenging one as well uh, in being able to uh, share, you know, the voices of the sections of the society we represent or our position through Bhutan Democracy Dialogue is not going to be easy. La. But if the parties in parliament can take our views uh, positively, then the, they will probably, uh, you know, if they can take that positively and not look at that as uh, something that would probably give more advantage to parties outside the parliament. I think it will probably help them identify their own weaknesses. It will probably help them identify their own mistakes and be able to correct them so that uh, the government uh, at the end of the day can perform more effectively and better. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, the promises can be made to the people can be delivered and uh, uh, probably there could be uh, positive differences that could be made. La. Yes. But if if our views and concerns are not taken in a positive matter, I, I think manner, then I suppose uh, I think uh, this would probably be uh, um, I think a lost, uh, a missed opportunity, where the government would be able to have this uh, check and balance on their performance. Yes, sir. Apart from this uh, democracy dialogue, la, what are some of the maybe one or two issues or concerns? That really bothers you for now, la. Some some really serious issues and concerns that bother you for now, as a president of Jukchirong Sokpal. Um, what really bothers me is I think, uh, first of all, the parties outside the parliament. Uh, the fact that uh, we've lost elections. Uh, we not only uh, lack the necessary platform, but I think it's also very difficult for parties outside the parliament to sustain in between elections. And uh, there can't be democracy without political parties. And I think this is something, the sustenance of political parties and the relevant role that they can play in between election, I think, is a concern. I th and also, uh, I think for our democracy to succeed, I think uh, we need the best leaders Yes. Uh, who can participate in the political process. La. And given the fact that uh, because of this uh, definition, the, and sometimes the wrong interpretation of the, the word apolitical, I think institutions, professionals uh, stay away from political parties. And I think this is a missed opportunity because if we get an opportunity to, to interact with those sort of individuals and, uh, uh, you know, the the, popul the general population at large and institutions, I think we can probably represent, you know, their concerns uh, and their voices better yes. as political party. In addition to that, I think uh, it's also a huge challenge as political parties in being able to to uh, recruit uh, competent professional, uh, you know, candidates uh, because of again uh, the the inflexibility we have in some of our rules and regulations that. If you participate in political, uh, you know, in political process through political parties, uh, one ends up, uh, you know, having um, to make a lot of personal sacrifices. So, the, so uh, I think uh, this this would be a challenge for all political parties in future to be able to present uh, very competent candidates to contest in the elections. In addition to that, I think the same issues we've been talking about since two thousand six were also uh, the, the voter turnout, uh, you know, the, 
having this rule where the voters need to go and vote from their place of uh, registration, I think has posed a number of challenges and yes. affected our voter turnout. And I think in future elections, our voter turnout is going to be even, uh, you know, far uh, lower than, than the last two elections. So there are a number of, uh, you know, concerns that we share, especially uh, the you know certain provisions in the election act certain provisions of the civil service act or other rules and regulations which i think affects uh, effective participation in the, of, uh, in, in the democratic process and uh, vibrant democracy in the country so through all these uh, issues raised does that mean you would still opt for an amendment in the election act um uh, unfor it was unfortunate that uh, the last, uh, you know, the proposal uh, which was submitted in the parliament uh, was turned down. But we are hopeful that uh, uh, in, in future, the, you know, parliamentary sessions that, uh, you know, this proposal could be reconsidered and revisited because there are certain provisions that might need to be revisited in the Election Act uh, which would usher well for our democracy in future. Yes. Uh, maybe a final uh, word from you la, as a uh, president and also as an individual. You've also been actively playing different kind of role in uh, our society as a writer, as a diplomat, and you did uh, uh, work in uh, uh, foreign agencies as well. So considering all these experiences, you have a vast range of experience in, uh, yeah, with you. So considering that, uh, maybe you could analyze the situation today and a word of appeal from you as a president of Duk Chiron Sokpal? Mm, I think uh, what I've observed uh, over the last 21 years of our service is that uh, we, we don't have a culture which encourages constructive criticism. Yes. And uh, we are yet to realize that, uh, you know, constructive criticism would give us an opportunity to analyze our own weaknesses and yes. uh, our own uh, uh, ch challenges and see where we're going wrong and uh, and be able to embrace uh, those constructive criticisms so that uh, uh, we, we can uh, bring about positive changes. I, I think uh, the moment uh, you know somebody engages, somebody offers a constructive criticism, we are immediately on a defensive mode. And we are yet to realize that if a citizen offers a constructive criticism, is out of concern, is out of love for one's country, uh, and uh, and there can be no progress if we uh, didn't admit our mistakes, if we didn't admit and accept that uh, mistakes have been made. There are challenges, there are issues that needs to be revisited and looked at, la. And I think uh, I, I hope that uh, you know. This is something that uh, our probably our policy makers could, uh, could be more open to constructive criticism, could be more open to dialogue, could be more open to partnerships, and uh, not always be on a defensive mode. Uh, and I think this is something that I would like to appeal for. And I think another challenge that we have in our system is that uh, most institutions are only looking within their own territory and only looking at their own interests. I think uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, put away those cards and look at a bigger picture, look at uh, the bigger uh, aspiration for our country and how each agency can contribute to that bigger national goal for our country la, rather than just looking at uh, institution-based uh, you know, interest or institution-based mandate, looking beyond our own mandate, looking beyond our own interest and looking at a bigger picture and see how each organization, how each institution, how each individual could contribute in that journey towards uh, the bigger, you know, the say for instance uh, the our development approach being gross national happiness yes. how do we contribute to that bigger goal uh, i think that is something that i would like to appeal to all our policy makers and our leaders uh. yes sir yes sir i um, really want to thank you so much for your time uh, with this we come to the end of our interview uh, as i'm um, really want to pointing out gnh is a, a philosophy for development Another thing is we claim ourselves to be buddhist and we have all these values like thaddamsi and lay 
are we living up to it? As a food for thought for all of us and those who are watching, uh, those who have watched this interview, I think we need to look into ourselves. We need to question ourselves that these are all the values that we preach, not within ourselves, uh, within our country, but even outside, we are known for preaching all these values. Are we living up to it? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.